Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you once again this Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. That is very good. And uh, well, as usual, we're going to check about the platform. So I'm going to show you that right away. Okay, it's going to be this one. This is the class of today. Provide tips to avoid cultural misunderstandings. And the question is already there, okay? Remember also that we should be moving on the homework 1.7. So we need to check the correct answers for this one. Only five questions and, and that's it. So let's check. Now we're gonna check the, uh, the attendance. So here we go. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Omaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today. And uh, we're going to start with a video, okay? So let's see how it goes. As usual, after we see the video, we're going to provide opinions and comments, okay? So here we go. Working together to build a safe and productive environment where people of all back... Yeah, sometimes this doesn't work. I don't know why. Working together to build a safe and productive environment where people of all backgrounds and cultures can thrive is part of having a successful organization. It might be that you are part of the cultural majority and that you have new cultures coming into your workplace that you have never met or worked with before. Or it might be that you are partnering with an organization in another country or even another part of your own country. Interacting with different cultures is inevitable in the modern workforce. And frankly, including different cultures means being forced to view things from different perspectives, which means building a stronger organization as a whole. The goal of this program is not to help you identify and work with specific cultures. The goal of this program is to help you engage with people of any culture respectfully and successfully. Here are some really simple, basic ways you can do that in your workplace. <coughs> Everyone deserves to be respected for who they are, where they come from, and what they've done. <coughs> the same is true in the workplace. Many of us spend more time with our coworkers than we do with our own families and we should therefore be treated respectfully and feel safe in our workplace. Whether you understand why someone does what they do or not, they still deserve to be treated with respect. <laughs> our way of being is so ingrained in who we are that we often don't notice the things that we do on a daily basis that may cause someone of a different culture to feel alienated or offended. This can be anything from the way we greet people to our hand gestures, to our figures of speech. 
become aware of the things you do in your daily life that might be confusing or offensive to someone. Different cultures have very different <coughs> understandings of personal space. Some parts of the world are so crowded that they're used to standing closer or even touching strangers while standing in lines. They're more comfortable talking closely or it is expected or common to hug or give a kiss on the cheek when greeting. Your concept of personal space may be very different from those you are interacting with. Be aware of what you're comfortable with and find ways to respectfully communicate that if needed. We all get set in our ways. We do things the way we have always done them. And we likely do things pretty similar to the people we are around most frequently. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be open to learning new ways. Listening to what others say gives you a lot of insight into who they are and how you can best interact with them. Really listening to the things they say helps you not only understand their values, which is an overarching indicator of how to interact with them, but also how they conduct business, how they view time, how they approach tasks and problems, and much, much more. It's one thing to be aware of our behaviors and the behaviors of others. It's another thing to be accepting of the behavior of others. And it's another thing altogether to be flexible ourselves. The ability to adjust what we're doing in order to accommodate what others are doing is one of those easier said than done things. Being flexible includes compromise and a willingness to change. Two things that aren't always easy for us to do, but that are worth doing. It's just a fact that things will not move as quickly when you're learning to work either within or with a new culture. Be patient with yourself and with others as everyone adapts and learns the group dynamic. Everyone has their own strengths or weaknesses. They have their own individual viewpoints of their own cultures. They bring different ideas to the table at work. They view the goal and the ways of reaching that goal based on their personal experiences. Get to know them as them. Give them a chance to teach you about who they are, and at the same time, give them a chance to get to know you as an individual as well. Following the previous thought, don't automatically believe what you hear about someone or about a culture. Yes, word of mouth can be helpful, and it can be a great way to learn about new people, but the person spreading the information is filtering it through their own personal experience. You have to form your own relationship with that person based on your own experiences or interactions with them, not someone else's. Now, I want to pause here and point something out. The more you exhibit these behaviors, your willingness to learn, your efforts to be self-aware, your flexibility, and your patience, others will notice. They will recognize that you are working to adapt. And you can expect that when you extend that effort, others will do the same for you in return. If you make the first move, others will follow, and your work environment will improve exponentially. This might just happen. Again, norms are different in different cultures. If you are offended by someone's behavior, you have a few options, depending on the scenario. Your decision on how to respond might be based on your relationship with the individual, your role within the organization, and the relationship between the two organizations, if that is a factor. In many instances, a respectful conversation between two individuals might be enough. You might want to loop your manager or the manager of both individuals into the conversation. Or this may be a conversation that representatives from HR of both organizations need to handle. The point being, you have options. If you are working with someone who is engaging in behavior that is offensive or that you need help understanding, you should feel empowered to say something. So this is really just the basics, some simple reminders of how to have a successful work environment with people of different cultures. The most important takeaways here are that everyone is an individual, deserving of respect, and expecting a safe work environment. Do your part and encourage others to do the same. Perfect. What did you understand on this one? What did you get on this? Well, we need to to see the other like can individuals like the others. We want like what we want the others see us. 
and uh, treat the people with respect and, and learn to solve the difference, to solve the difficulties. Uh, uh, look for the conversation to, to solve the difference. Uh, many times we only think the words and, and don't talk with the people and, and it is important. It is important to talk with the other people. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, uh, communication is very important at any level. And uh, speaking about multicultural differences, definitely something that we need to consider, right? So we need to always listen, provide our opinions in, with respect, that is very important. Perfect, thank you, David. Any other opinions or comment about this topic or the video that we just watched? This video uh, contains like a kind of etiquette, et etiquette is the right word for meetings. Yeah. And in order to keep a safe and productive work environment, uh, it's, uh, what he was talking about is uh, the, we must uh, be, uh, uh, we must uh, be able to receive feedback. I understood for the attendees and also uh, be able to listen what the others say. Uh, we must understand that everybody has different ideas mm -hmm. and we have to ignore the rumors. And, and, and another important thing is that is um, particular behavior that is uh, uh, affecting to me that um, maybe we think that is offensive to me we need to look for options for help. Uh, sometimes also this could escalate to HR department and always look for a, for a solution. But, but I understood this like, um, like a type of standards for uh, etiquette for meetings, right? Business meetings. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, there are things that are going to be important, as you say, respectful, listen, uh, many, many things. So, uh, of course, everything is related not only for work, but also for a social uh, way for you to, to be in any place, right? So it's something that is expected from you and from everybody. Any other comments or opinion on this video? Okay, so this is something that we checked before actually, and uh, we're gonna continue. I don't know why it's in this module, but this is the only class that is about this one. So it's about uh, avoiding cultural misunderstanding around the world. I remember that we were discussing about this one in previous modules. Anyways, we're gonna speak about that one today only. And uh, yes, we were discussing uh, before that in El Salvador, maybe there are not many uh, gaps uh, speaking about culture. I mean, uh, yes, sometimes we have people from other country here, but it's not that common, depending of course on your industry, right? There are industries that they have more people involved from other countries. In general, let's say that the most that we have is people from San Miguel or people from different parts of the country, but not from other countries. In other countries, yes, this is, a major uh, situation that we need to face. I mean, if you go to the United States, for example, and you work in a company, yeah, you might have people from everywhere in the world. And then this can become kind of difficult, not difficult, but we need to understand how to handle these things. And since, I mean, uh, we are learning English and probably in the future, you are going to have a position where you will have people from other parts of the world around you, or maybe you are going to commute to other country or uh, many things. I mean, uh, we need to consider this one whenever we are gonna speak with that kind of people. So let's check about cultural misunderstanding around the world. So uh, the first part introduction is going to be for David. Could you please help me in reading that David? Of course, teacher. Sorry, I am mute. Ah, okay, no. 
Okay, cultural misunderstanding can be worse type of embarrassment you can possibly face. It happens when you do something that is totally fine to you to do in your culture, but is offensive to the other. This kind of confusions may cause you from embarrassment to good beating and most probably getting fired from a job. So one thing is clear that we must be wary of cultural misunderstanding in order to avoid troubles. It can happen both ways. Sometimes unintentionally, someone may hurt your feelings and sometimes maybe you will offend someone terrible. In either case, you should always accept that there is a possibility that cultural differences are causing communication problems and be patient or forgiving instead of being an aggressive. You should always respond slowly with kindness, do not jump to the conclusion that other offended you intentionally. It is always better to research about all possible misunderstandings that might take place in that particular country. You choose from education. So here are some of the most common cultural misunderstandings one may have to face. Perfect, good. So what did you understand on this one? That uh, we need to be careful because some things that are normal in our country maybe is uh, uh, an offensive conduct in the in the other countries or in other places or in other region of the same country we need to to be aware and uh, to be patient with the others when we we feel offended but maybe it's not the intention to the other people for, for us. Okay, very good. So that happens. I mean, so when you don't know about these differences with other cultures, sometimes we do things that for other people might be offensive or disrespectful. And the other way around, I mean, other people might say or do something that for us is not good. So yeah, we need to be aware, for, first of all, and then we need to try to understand, right? So that we are I, I, I remember a particular situation. I, I was in a meeting with a group of, a, of a people from, a, from Chile. And they invite us to the beach. The beach was near about five minutes walking. And uh, I said, yes, yes, I want to go. But uh, let me go for my uh, sunsuit, but in Spanish, I, I, I need to go for my calzoneta. And these guys uh, was laughing, laughing at what happened. Uh, what do you need? Uh, I need my calzoneta. And uh, well, what happened? I, I realized that it was something, uh, a misunderstanding. And the guy said me after that, uh, calzoneta in, in Chile is the, the la ropa interior femenina. And uh, <laughs> it was embarrassment for me, but <laughs> we need to learn that, that, that kind of things. <laughs> that is so true. And that happens, I mean, sometimes we speak very, uh, very normal, right? And uh, I mean, other from, in other places, in other cultures, I mean, the good thing is that almost always is funny, right? It's like, oh, <laughs> what you say is funny here. So, but sometimes might be uh, disrespectful in speaking about the job at the office. I mean, that is something that we need to be careful. And that happens in many ways. I mean, for example, I had a friend that she went to, to leave to Spain and after a while, she took her mother with her. And, you know, here in El Salvador, it's like normal that she said, bájese de la mesa, el gato está, bájese. And, and she speak like that one. And she used to do that one there in, in Spain. 
And everybody was like, hey, your mom really respect the cat, uh, the cat. I mean, it's very formal with the cat and I don't know what's going on. I mean, it was kind of a different thing, right? But yeah, sometimes might be uh, some other thing. For example, in Korea, it, it's not permitted that anybody touches the head of children because they believe that there is the soul. So if you touch, I mean, here in somebody is like, hey, the little kid, right? But that is like, oh my goodness, what you're doing. So that is offensive, right? So things like that happen. So and we definitely, we need to take and consider this one. Good, so let's go to the first part. It says hand gestures. So there are four paragraphs. The first two paragraphs are going to be for Anna Claudia. Sure, hand gestures. It is always advised to mind your body language when in an unknown company, especially if you are in a foreign country. Sometimes the hand gestures you, may, you make can have different meanings that what they have in your country. You must be aware of okay signs you make with your thumbs up. In Iran, it's considered an insult. It's known as uh, bilak, I guess. Bilak, yeah. <laughs> bilak, which is a substitute to what showing middle finger means. Ooh. In Brazil and France, the OK sign where thumbs and um, four finger meet to create a circle is an offensive gesture that refers to an offensive gender mark. Unless you are really looking Looking forward to a pounding in few days in jail, I suggest you avoid it. Okay, what do you get here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was so offensive in Iran and, and also the, the other meaning in, in Brazil. That is important to uh, be aware or at least to research uh, some uh, circumstances or word or gesture, in this case, hand gestures if we are planning to go to another country to avoid incidents like this, because there are other countries that they are so, um, they are so strict. And yes, jail could be involved in this type of incident, even though you don't know that is not like, uh, that is not something for they to forgive you because everybody supposed that when you travel to another country, at least you uh, look for basic information of what to do and what not to do. Yeah, that is true. I mean, uh, everybody, they they pretend or they uh, expect that if mm -hmm. you are going to travel to one country, at least you, the most basic, you know, right? So, you know, the places, you know, where to go, where not to go, uh, mm -hmm. what to eat, where to look for some things. And this, of course, uh, language, mm -hmm. body language, of course, is something that is uh, important. Not only this one, but uh, many, many things. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, in the news, I was reading that in a parade, there was a, a person from Latin America then Germany, and he made the, the Nazi symbol, you know, hey, yeah, something like that. Oh. But it was, a, it was a joke for him. I mm -hmm. mean, he was arrested immediately. <laughs> And he spent the night in jail. And I mean, he was saying, no, but it's a joke. It's because I saw something mm -hmm. there in the parade. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in that country, that is something that you cannot do, even if mm -hmm. as a joke, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, in mind, okay, is something that for us, or for uh -huh. almost everybody around the world. Is. Exactly. It's a okay sign. Mm -hmm. But it's a, imagine. <laughs> Like the like the the, uh, the middle finger. Yeah, I mind that you you say that in Iran. Hey, okay, I'm happy with you, and <laughs> that's not good. So I suppose that I'm just thinking. So I suppose Facebook uh, or any other social media they do not include. <laughs> that, oh, definitely no, not that at all. Icon. <laughs> but the icon, maybe. Not at all. Yeah, it's, actually that happens as well. Even the keyboards or the um, uh, the way that they interact, uh, I mean, the icons that they have are mm. totally different. So it's, it's not going to be included because it's offensive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Good to know. 
Very good, perfect, thank you. So the other part is going to be the other two paragraphs for Juan Miguel. Hey, um, I used to travel, yeah? Yeah, that's the one, and the other one. I used to travel to Brazil as, as the technical representative of an international coffee company. Upon arrival, yeah, arrival or arrival? Arrival. Arrival. Yeah. arrival. Upon arrival at one of our key suppliers, they wanted, they wanted to me see and taste the result of a process improvement that they had developed. After going through the tasting ritual, I turned it, I turned them, I turned, turned to them and with a big smile on my face, told that I was indicating that the improvement was very good. However, when I held up my hand with a circle form with my thumb and my forefinger symbolizing, okay. <laughs> Sorry, symbolizing, okay, the faces around the room fell and there was a collective gasp of dismay. Shares Andrew J. Perla. Okay, what do you get in this one? <laughs> I think he um, he tried to um, to communicate something, uh, but with the history, with the with his body language, uh, for him maybe it was an okay, but for other people it was like uh, um, it's not approved maybe or is not a uh, a good sign to use, yeah. So, uh, like Anna Claudia and, and you said before, uh, knowing the the at least the general things that you can do and you cannot do in our country is key. From uh, for you when you are uh, thinking to travel abroad, yeah, in order to avoid this kind of. Embarrassing situations, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So that is true. We need to understand how other culture works. Um, yeah, speaking about some things like this, I uh, remember I, I read about that one in Micronesia. I don't know if I told you that before, but in Micronesia there was a reading. I remember there is a reading that a teacher was in Micronesia and she was. It was a very hot day and she was looking for something to drink and she entered a little restaurant that she found and she asked to the person that was there, uh, is there a soda, a very cold soda that I can buy from her? And the other woman didn't do anything, didn't say anything. And then she repeated the question, do you, do you have any soda, something cold that I would like to, to buy from you so I can I can get something to drink because I'm so thirsty. And the woman didn't say and didn't do anything. She said, well, I don't know what's going on. And she went out and she went home whatsoever. Then she realized that the other woman, actually she answered. She said that uh, she realized that in Micronesia for the people to say yes, they just uh, close the, the, the eyes like yes, like this. So... But she didn't know, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think there are there are things that uh, could may save your life, and you don't know. Like this, yeah. for example, if you are thirsty and you are looking for a, a water, a, a glass of water, or maybe like like she uh, a soda, uh, <laughs> the situation could could save her life but like she didn't know she just passed the situation and and thought okay uh, there is there is no one to to attend me so i it's better to go home and, and she didn't buy anything yeah in my and so uh, something that is very simple like a yes or no i mean uh, and that happens whenever you are with people from other uh, cultures yeah, communication, maybe if they speak English and we speak English or the same language, definitely is going to be a challenge sometimes because we need to be careful and we need to 
learn little by little. And the, uh, sometimes we can read online, but depending on the region and the same country, also there are differences. So uh, that, is, that is a big thing that we need to check it out. Okay, number two says embracing. That is going to be for William Alexander. Not possible, William. Okay, uh, Jose Wilfredo, is it possible for you? Not possible either. Dora Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, embracing. Embracing is a one of the ways to great in most parts of the world, but not in all parts of the world. There are some countries where trying to embrace um, make, might, my, pardon, might get to embarrassed. In each Asia is advised to keep a respectful distance. Likewise, if you are in one of the countries, just in both it's but these countries just don't touch their hair because their hair is considered sacred and if some touch is a serious insult to them. In Qatar, men and women are forbidden to public embrace one another. Whereas in some countries, embracing is an important part of the, their lives. In right. Italy, lives in Italy, little in Italy, perdón, in Italy, little, 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 embracing one another is a regular basis, a common custom. Like which in many other countries, whether they are Muslim, Christian, or Jewish, it is common custom to meet near until by embracing. However, you might you may you might you might want to avoid embracing opposite gender no matter where you are. Serious, don't try, don't try it. They will not ask which country you are from. Good. What did you understand on this one? In this case, uh, embracing is no. It's no uh, uh, cost, it's a, it's a custom in many countries. For um, some countries, it's a insult, maybe, or, 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 or offense. In other countries, it's a show the a kinds uh, or a uh, kind of uh, um, the um, respect or, or, or I don't know, cariño, care. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that you yeah. care, huh? Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so yes, embracing is something that is like. Uh, very common in some countries here in El Salvador, in Latin America, actually is kind of uh, something common, right? Maybe you don't uh, embrace, you don't hug um, a woman that you don't know or that, or that you meet. In some countries, I mean, yeah, that happens. But in general, uh, there are countries where it's not possible to to embrace another person. It doesn't matter what happens. So, and there is the other example that I was telling you that um, don't touch uh, their hair because it's sacred and it's, it's not good, right? In, in mind that in, in Qatar, men and women are forbidden to publicly embrace one another. So it doesn't matter if it's your brother, your sister, your mother, in public, you cannot embrace other person. It's, it's impossible. Actually, I was reading the news that for the World Cup, some women, they have to uh, 
follow the rules of the country in certain aspects, not all the aspects, but they have to continue doing that one because uh, it's the rule for the whole country. So yeah, it's, it's something that we need to understand, right? Mm -hmm. Very good, perfect. Number three says, mind your feet. That is going to be for, let's see, Jose Rivas, it's possible for you. Okay, not possible. Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. Mind your feet. You must know in many cultures, especially in Muslim. How, how do you pronounce that, that word? That is Muslims. Muslims. Okay. Uh, Salt of feet are directed very carefully. Uh, if you are pointing your feet, so to someone, it is like that disrespect them. Uh, Richard Cook from Na Naples, Florida, 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 Chair of Florida. Okay, Florida. Shared of his experiences when he had a meeting with a client. I like to sit with my legs crossed. I was in London at a business meeting with a with an Arab client, and while my legs were crossed, I was showing him the sole of my shoes. Afterward, someone told me that was a, an offense to an Arab. Uh, no wonder I didn't get the sale. Good, perfect. What did you understand on this one? Mm, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, in my case, I, I didn't know about that. Uh, it's, it's very important when you, for example, if you have a, have a, a business meeting with a person from another culture, is, uh, you, can, you can read or you have to read something about what, what are the, or how, to, how to be with that kind of person because you, you don't know. And it's, it's very important because you, if, if you want to, to do business with with another person the, from another culture, you have to study about the cultures and how to how to trade him or she. Uh, that that aspects are, are very important. And in this case, uh, uh, he didn't get the sale, so it's it's a, maybe it's a, you can learn about this experience. Perfect. So definitely, I mean. It might have important is a little gesture that, I mean, he didn't get the sell. I mean, he lost something there for the company just because of that. For us, that is kind of not not big deal. I mean, you can see it whatever you want, uh, but in mind for Muslims, if you show the, the, the shoe, the part of the shoe that is below, that is touching the floor, right? The sole. Uh, I mean, it's, it's disrespectful, it's, it's an insult. And you need, I mean, if you are going to have a meeting with people from other country, and it's an important meeting, yeah, you need to to know, I mean, how to how to greet, how to speak, um, many things are important. Uh, Muslims, you know what is Muslims? What is Muslims, anybody? Musulmanes. Okay, very good. So this is like a religion, right? So. The three more popular religion are the Christians, the Muslims, and the Jews. So, very good. Let's go to the next one, number four. This is going to be for Andres Giovanni Valdivieso. No shoes. There are many places in the world when you must take off your shoes before you shut off before entering. Masjids and temples are the common example for this. However, in some cultures, you are not even allowed to enter in a house with your, with your shoes on. In the South Pacific or some parts of Asia, you must remember to remove your shoes before entering a house as a sign of respect and clean, clean lightness. In Japanese culture, these things is most common. However, in countries like Germany, 
they also sometimes require you take your shoes off before entering the house. Very good. What did you understand on this one? That uh, they practice that, uh, that like, uh, como costumbre? Custom. Custom. Um, I also know that some people from Indonesia, they take off their shoes when they are eating. eating. Yes. That for day, uh, there is something very common, but in this culture, it's not. We don't do that kind of things only in our house. Okay. Yeah, we do it here in, in Latin America just because you want to be comfortable, right? It's because yes. of whatever it takes. But there, for them, it's very, very important. So, yeah, when you go, mostly when you go to an Arabic country or when you go to an Asian country, definitely you need to research because there will be lots of things that are going to be totally different. And this is one of those. I mean, for some people, for some regions, um, you need to remove your shoes. Of course, you need to be ready and have a clean a new socks, right? So you don't have another environment. <laughs> We, we we went for on, on a, a house of some Chinese guy, and uh, we need to leave our shoes in the in the entrance, but uh, you need to sit down in the in the floor. Right. In the floor, and there is a, a table, and uh, but you don't put your feet toward the table. You need to put your feet. Uh, from the front to behind, <laughs> it is important because you, you don't you don't uh, sit down like, like uh, here. You you uh, close your feet in front of you. Uh, that is not possible. <laughs> you need to put the the feet uh, behind you. Is it, is for us is a very uncomfortable uh, position to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uncomfortable, definitely, and. But you are right. Those are things that you need to do whenever you are there, right? So, and uh, of course, since they have practiced all their lives, uh, it's very nice for them. But uh, if you go and do this uh, for the first time when you are a, a grown up, definitely it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. So some things are easier than other things. Like, for example, when you when you need to eat with a, uh, with the uh, sticks, the Chinese sticks, right? So that is something that you need to practice. It's not that easy. I mean, it has to be something very important. In, the, uh, in some regions, you cannot eat with other things, just with the sticks. So there are many things that you need to learn whenever you go to other country. Okay, number five, it says using words carefully. So this is going to be for Heidi. Okay, teacher, using words carefully. Words can be sharper than a sword. They should always be used carefully, even if you are in homeland. Oops, sorry. But on international level, they literally create a crate of confusion and sorry, I'm not wearing my son, my glasses and oh, awkwardness, okay. right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sometimes wrong pronunciation can cause misunderstanding, and often one word may have different meaning in a, in different cultures or countries. Here's an example of. Of, of it that a friend shared on online portal. While I was studying Spanish in Mexico during the early 80s, I once made a mistake of asking a single Mexican woman if a situation had made her embarrassed, embar embarrassada. 
He meant embarrassed, right? Uh, yeah. That, of course, means pregnant rather than embarrassed, which they refer to vergüenza, shame. Her shock was mirrored in my very red face, but I was feeling shame for sure. I wasn't, I wasn't embarrassada. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did you get from this one? Uh, it can happen even to us, teacher, even yeah. to us uh, that we are learning, right? That we can say a word that has a much or coincidence with, with another word that we don't meant to say. So we, we got to be careful, right? That is true. So there are words that might be uh, similar to other words in other language, but it means exactly uh, something different, right? So, for example, uh, that happens a lot. For example, actually, right? When we are learning English, actually, it's a word that we believe that is actualmente, but it's not, right? And there are many other words. For example, I remember that I was with a friend sometime, and he was also learning English, and he said that his brother always, uh, he was always molesting him. Nice. Oh, oh, that sorry. sounds like English, right? <laughs> that is not good I say what's what he usually does and he says that I mean but it was like a regular annoying he was bothering him but not molesting because molesting is is something sexual right so he mm -hmm. was touching him or something like that and at the end we were laughing right because he <laughs> used the word in a different way but in English it's totally different in Spanish we use that word no molestes but not in English. In English, that is something totally different. Imagine, imagine that you are saying something like that in a business meeting, I mean, mm -hmm. or with people at the job. I mean, my brother always molests me. I mean, really? Okay, so it's going to be shocking, right? So the words, the language that we use, or even the intonation on what we are saying might cause an effect on, on these kind of things. You know, you know, some, some, uh, one, this one time, something really funny happened to me. Okay. Uh, remember, remember, Banco Cuscatlan has been in the city for a little while, right? Yeah. And they used a lot of words from, from mm -hmm. the US, right? And mm -hmm. name or reports and a lot of practices. And, and this time, um, we were going to have the visit of, of, of high officials from city. NA, right? When and we all branches had to how to share with them uh, this report called placemate, placemate, mm -hmm. and uh, this this report showed everything about the branch, uh, from how many employees, how many account uh, savings, check-ins, time deposits. Uh, the the whole uh, um, cartera, how do you say cartera? Portfolio of Portfolio. loans and uh, results of obituaries, everything, everything about a branch. And this report was called placement. And then one time, my assistant branch manager, uh, when I got to the branch, she, 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 she told me, hey, the boss called you. Uh -huh, and what did he say? I asked her. And she said, uh, it, he said uh, that you needed to 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 get him a playmate. What he said? <laughs> what a playmate? And you know what I was thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and, oh, I have to call him. I, I told her. And when I called him, and he said, "Hey, get your your playmate ready because the the big boss is coming." And, and then I started laughing. <laughs> Yeah, in my industry. <laughs> Where do I find that when it's like I don't know anything? Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but the so, good thing is that you 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 call him directly. I mean, that is uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but that happens. I mean, a little war, a little misunderstanding, and they can that can cause you a big problem, or at least that you are embarrassed, right? So that uh -huh. is 
that is something that, yeah, as I was telling you at the beginning, in the most of the cases, maybe it's going to be funny, right? You say a word that in another country means something different. But in some situations, I mean, it may cause you problems and we need to avoid that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Okay. And uh, well, these are like the most common, but there are many other that might be not that common, but they can happen. Do you remember any other situation? Mm, let's see. Not really. Okay. And anybody else wants to share any situation where uh, because of cultural things, you made a mistake or somebody made a mistake here in El Salvador? Me? Okay. I, but it was with Spanish speakers, with okay. Panam, uh, people from Panama. I, we were visiting Colombia at the time. Ah, it was some time ago. Uh, we were having a good conversation, laughing, eating, and I don't know why <laughs> I mentioned something and, and I said for one of my colleagues, oh, you know, what happened is that Carlos El Pajero, everybody was, what? <laughs> <laughs> because they are using that word but on a different uh, context right <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that was a joke that they still don't forget uh, nowadays so because it, uh, because he was telling me my even my 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 colleague, he didn't know it. He told me, Vos la pajera. So it was oh. a funny situation. So it was <laughs> a funny situation for them. It's like a sexual context, yeah. something like that. You know, <laughs> but it was so, so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, there are words that are kind of totally, totally different, right? So even mm -hmm. when we use it in a, in a normal way, and the same happens to us, I mean, uh, another person can come and tell you something and then you say what what did you say mm -hmm. I mean, that is not good right so mm -hmm. <laughs> very good perfect thank you for sharing any other uh, person wants to share any situation like this that ha happened to you or you have seen anybody else's Okay, so uh, we are going to check the attendance now and then we're gonna continue with the second part that is going to be how to avoid cultural misunderstanding, okay, at the workplace. So, but, but first, of all, first of all, we're gonna check about the attendance. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Here, teacher, present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. I'm here, Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Erwin Lagos Andrade. 
Okay, so we are going to continue with a little video. Okay, as usual, we're gonna watch the video and then you're going to share what you got or um, what you, if you have comments or opinions on this one. Okay, so let's watch the video. It got stuck. Let's try it. How many of you have found yourself in a situation where you're talking to someone from another country or from another culture, or even from another state or city, that you don't quite get what they're saying? And you're just kind of con confused. Camera's raising his hands. You're kind of clueless. And sometimes you're just, you don't know what's going on. Well, we're here to talk to you today about cross-cultural communication. And we think it's a fairly important topic to the four of us. And we hope it's you know, valuable to you as well. So first thing we want to show you is Cross-cultural exchange is everywhere. And I some put up a little bit funny picture there, but it shows you that even in simple places like a market, you know, remote place in China, that it still exists as well. But so the point here is, did you know that translation service is actually a $40 billion industry and it's growing 8% a year? Did you know that 40% of your classmates here are from another country? Did you know that also terrorism and cross-border commerce and all of those things require nuanced cultural understanding that's sometimes actually in you know, beyond the simple language. Um, and what I will show you here is a picture of a George W. with King uh, Abdullah uh, from Saudi. And you might find that strange, but it's actually in their customs to hold hands while two men talk. Um, it just goes to show that it is really a powerful um, aspect of communication that all these cultural differences underlying what we say. Um, so the things we also want to point out is we haven't had a session on cross-cultural communication from this class, uh, so we think it's underappreciated in some sense. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we all speak English here, obviously, at the GSB, but it really belies some of the underlying differences that people don't really express from a purely linguistic perspective. And the second, the, the, the last point, and the second last point is really some of these things are very hard to know because when you're talking to someone from another culture, they don't re really give you a lot of feedback or when you lose attention on them, they don't really, you know, give you, hey, sorry, I didn't understand. Like that very rarely happens unless, you know, you guys are really close. So, but the good news for, for all of you guys is we're here to help. So today we're going to talk to you guys about some of our personal stories from the past, what we experienced, and hopefully bring to you uh, what JD terms, you know, conscious incompetence. So you're aware, at least when you're talking to someone from another culture, that some things are not going across. And lastly, we're going to offer you some advice and tips so you guys have a sense of, you know, what maybe small things you can do to be very effective. So with that, I'm going to pass on to Feng Xiao, who's going to talk to you about some of the verbal communication challenges. Yes. So what we want you to take away from this class is to stay lit. We want you to listen, inquire, and test things out whenever you're talking to people who are from different cultures. But before we even do that, what are some things that might get into the way of that? Well, in Fred Jan's book, um, An Introduction to Intercultural Communication, there are three things that we consider to be barriers to communication when it comes to the aspect of listening. The first one is anxiety. I mean, how many of us have traveled the world and got into a new country and we're like, we're not really sure what the norms are, we're not really sure what the culture is, or how to shake hands or do those things. Anxiety is a number one reason that people are impacted and it affects people's communication across cultures. A second one is judging other groups by your own culture. Every, I mean, this may seem common sense, but you might think that everyone does the same things or acts the same way that you do when you go into a new environment. And that's another reason why people have found it really challenging to communicate with people in other cultures. A third reason is, is the same language, different meaning. I mean, Jess speaks English, I speak English. Ash and the other cohort speaks English, but I'm speaking Nigerian slash American English. She's speaking British English, and Ash is speaking Australian English. We're all speaking the same language, but there are different words that mean different things. And it's important to be very aware that these, we might be using the same words, but to understand that there might be deeper meaning in those words. 
And so to bring it back to the GSB, what are some common mishaps that happen? I mean, how many of us have been in a class where someone has said something, go ahead and break a leg? I remember the first time I came to the US and someone told me to do that, I was really concerned and backed away slowly. <laughs> but that's not what that means. It's an encouragement, maybe you're about to go on a show. But these are their ex idiomatic expressions such as this, that if you're from, coming from another country, you may not be very familiar with what that means. And it's important to recognize that, that you may have to explain that to another person. Another expression is references. A professor in class asks someone a question to which no one answered, and she proceeds to say, Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Who knows what I'm talking about? This is a reference to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Now, in a class like this, where the class is 40% international, you may not know what that means. And you've lost 40% of your class, and they are lost. They've missed the entire message of what you're trying to get across. We're very guilty of this, especially at the GSB. And it's very important to be aware that when you make movie or TV or even sports references, then not everyone's going to understand what you're referring to. The third one are non-existent words. And what I mean by that is if you're, if, for example, if you're speaking Spanish, there's a word that's used in Spanish, but does not it doesn't, the word does not exist in English. Those are very difficult to transfer from one language to the other. And if you find a word that's very close, some of that meaning is also lost. So being very aware of what that means. So that's it for verbal communication. Remember to stay lit, and I'll pass it on to Willa. So when I was five years old, my family moved from the US to Mexico. We made wonderful Mexican friends there. They uh, taught us local customs, traditions, um, and then gestures as well. So some of these gestures included thank you and mucho, which is also kind of a lot, or it can also mean it's crowded here. Uh, so then, about a year and a half later, we picked up and moved to Argentina. And this is a picture of a very famous place in Argentina. It's also one of the worst intersections you can imagine for traffic. <laughs> so here, lanes mean effectively nothing. Um, direction of travel is kind of a suggestion. <laughs> and uh, one day, my father was driving my brother and I along this road. And um, by some weird fluke, some guy stopped to let us merge in front of him. My father was confused but grateful and gestures what he believed to be kind of thank you a lot and it's also crowded here so he thinks this is like the perfectly efficient use of gesture <laughs> and uh, like from one second to the next this guy goes from this calm relaxed guy letting us in front of him to this kind of maniacal road raging monkey man who jumps out of his car and starts like beating on the hood in the windows of our car <laughs> um, so at this point I'm really thankful that when my father steps out of the car, his physical stature alone is enough to kind of resolve this issue. <laughs> but uh, later that night, we learned that to Chileans, uh, of whom there are many in Argentina, the Mexican mucho is actually la concha, which um, is frequently used as concha de tu madre, or directly translated as your mother's <laughs> shell. So I, I will let you all think about the details there. <laughs> But um, this was an example of a dangerous assumption you don't want to make about nonverbal communication. So while it can be an extremely effective and useful tool, um, I urge you all to be both aware and um, respectful of not only the obvious differences in kind of personal space or um, gestures, although I guess not that obvious to my father, um, or eye contact, but also kind of the more subtle and nuanced differences in the cultural understanding of time, kind of the pace of activity, and the use of silence, and also the use of touch. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to George. Thank you, Willem. That was the Mexican thank you, not a suggestion about Willem's mother, uh, who I'm sure is a wonderful lady. Um, has anyone in here ever used a translator? As anyone, it, it's a very interesting and challenging experience. Uh, I've, uh, I was in the military and I served in the Middle East and then in Southeast Asia. And a lot of the partners that we worked with to mentor uh, and conduct their own missions didn't speak English. They either spoke a language of Afghanistan or Tagalog, which is a, a language uh, in the Southeastern Philippines. So I often found myself dealing with translators. And so the, the tools that I'm going to share with you today are things that I uh, learned the hard way through a lot of sweat and tears and embarrassment. One of those uh, that I'd like to highlight is that humor doesn't translate nearly as well <laughs> and through another language, particularly through the filter of a translator. 
if you can imagine the downside of, of really offending someone in another language is huge, and trying to get a small chuckle out of someone isn't even worth the risk. My advice to you, don't try and make a joke through a translator. Something that I am very guilty of is that when I would have meetings, I would speak to my translator and I would lose rapport with the audience that I was actually trying to speak to. So I would maintain a conversation and eye contact with one individual as he or she was meant to translate to the audience. And I completely isolated and marginalized this person because I focused on the translator. So I'd encourage you, if you're ever using a translator, in fact, just be mindful to re maintain rapport and body language and eye contact with your intended audience, not your translator. Something that to me seemed uh, intuitive as I looked back and having made these mistakes is something about preparation. Sit down and present with your translator or share your slides with your translator prior to the actual event so that they can proofread and help you out and actually own, you own your own message. Something that's unique about translators is that you think you have your own microphone, but what the audience actually hears is, is the translator's message, not your own. So if, if you're going to own your message, make sure that you craft it exactly how you want it and practice with your translator. Uh, there's, a, there's a number of other things that I have stories I would share with you, but we're, we're running out of time. Um, one of those is around jargon and colloquial phrases. I think we've, we've learned a lot about that this morning through Willem's gestures as well as the sports metaphors. But I just want to reiterate it. Don't try and make a colloquial phrase uh, with, through a translator because it just isn't going to work well. Uh, and so when it, when it comes to translators and then wrapping it up, what we really want you guys to take away is this cute little acronym we devised to stay lit. Really do listen, inquire, and test anytime you're going to be uh, communicating cross-culturally. And lastly, we want to serve as resources for all of you going forward. So we've listed our contact information behind us and some of the geographies that we've exposed ourselves to. So if you ever find yourself either throughout your career at the GSB or after business school going to one of these geographies, drop us a note and we can give you some of the stories and lessons that we've learned the hard way so that you don't make the same mistakes that we did. Okay, what did you get from the video? Okay, they are sharing some experience that they travel out of the USA and how they were embarrassing by, by this experience or, or how they feel in, in, in that cases. And it is important to, to know about, uh, uh, even though in the near and here in, in Central America, we have many differences and we need to be careful what we speak in, in other countries and with people from the other countries. It, it's important. Okay, very well. So that is it. And they, yeah, they were, they were sharing, you know, these are uh, university uh, students and they are presenting to a class about that one, about, about the way that you're going to present or to uh, speak, communicate with other people, and that might be dangerous if you do not research, right? Any other comments or opinions? I think, teacher, that in, it's interesting uh, use of technology. Nowadays, we have um, very useful technology. For example, the, the, the advice that uh, he has is use translate when we we are in other countries and today there is um, a lot of tools but for, for translate even in real time even with your with your camera you can translate and uh, um an object that had tried and then are not some words um that is very helpful because uh, these tools um that than it fixed in the past Today is more, I don't know, easier for us. Um, I had never been in this situation, but I think that all people have a cell phone in, in your in your pocket. So I think that it's very easy with other people, but I don't know. <laughs> I had never been in this situation. Maybe it's complicated because 
uh, I know about English, but there is a lot of language there outside. So maybe I think in, for example, in Sweden, that is very complicated. I don't know uh, any word from Sweden. So I, I had to trust completely in the translating. Maybe it's, it's the technology, so it can fail, but it's, it's a little hope. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, actually, that is true. I mean, yeah, you can use a, a, a software or anything like that. Nowadays, it's easier. But yeah, I mean, they were saying also that, uh, for example, if you use slangs, I mean, it's not it's not going to be possible to translate properly. Or if you use slang, even when you speak with other person in the same language, they won't understand. And also uh, sometimes with the humor, right? With the jokes that they say sometimes, it's a little bit difficult because they won't, uh, I mean, that is not possible to transcend. You won't be able to translate the joke in a proper way. Uh, so it's kind of difficult. Yeah. You know, the, the girls say that it's not recommended to translate joke or idioms uh, as a person in, in the translate. It's worse, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good idea. If it's going to be like a formal conversation, maybe that will be good, but don't try because maybe it's going to get you in trouble. So it's better not to do it. Good, perfect. Any other comments or opinions? I think before any business meeting, uh, we all should make a little research about the right behavior, the right, or for example, when there is a meeting where, for example, it comes someone from France, another person from US, another person from Brazil, uh, we have to agree which, which language we are going to use, right? And uh, for example, once happened to me that uh, where we're going to, to have this business meeting, with people from China and my boss was telling me uh, how the way we, we should behave, right? And, and I asked him, hey, not about the language, do they speak English? I asked him, oh, no, no, never speak English to a Chinese. They don't like it. They bring with them their own, their own, uh, their own traducer, mm -hmm. right? And, and no, no, don't speak in English to them because they don't like it. Okay. So, yeah, that is, so that is you, have a, you have to do a, a, a research, right? To be ready. That and is to true. behave the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to behave properly more when you are in a business meeting, definitely is going to be very, very important to, to research in advance, right? How it's going to be uh, to speak with your boss. Uh, the, the way that you did, it was totally totally the right path because they know the the company they know many things so research is going to be very important so you behave in a very good way and speaking about business of course it's going to be something something very valuable because you don't want to to ruin the business just because uh, a, a gesture that you made or some a word that you say so it's totally totally important good any other comments or opinions well, in my case, when I start to be a WFM, it was really complicated because, you know, uh, well, my, I, I know that you don't know, but well, my boss is from Hindi, from India. So, you know, they have a lot of religion and a lot of beliefs and well, a lot of things so different than us. So first, I need to make a little research about that to, to speak with them. So very good. So we need to be careful when you speak. Yeah, we need to. I mean, yeah, whenever you have a, a person from other country, you need to research uh, to understand how it's going to be uh, the communication, right? Uh, even worse, if it's going to be like in a call or something like that. I mean, you need to speak very clearly. And of course, uh, 
try to understand the accent, uh, and the words that they're going to say. Very good, perfect. Any other comments or opinion? Okay, it was very interesting. I don't know if you noticed that one at the beginning of the video that uh, the uh, former president of the United States, he was walking with an Arabic person and another man walking hand in hand, right? So look how the cultures are very different. I mean, in the Arabic countries, the Muslims, they you cannot embrace people in public. That is something that you cannot do. But yes, you can walk with another man walking hand in hand. So, I mean, here in Latin America, maybe that is not good or not, not common, not normal. Uh, but in other countries, it's normal. But other things that for us is, is very normal, for, for them is not good. So definitely it's going to be, you can see how different are the cultures around the world. So let's read a little bit more about how to avoid the cultural misunderstanding that can impact your business. And we're going to start with this uh, first paragraph, yeah, only one, uh, that is going to be for Fernando Gonzalez. Uh, globalization has led to an swing in cross-cultural working collaboration. Be it between business clients or work colleagues. Additionally, the global labor market now mandates many managers to seek talent across cultures and borders, with some teams only working remotely. Why this has led to fantastic innovation, business is expansion, and involve a working relationship. The speed with which internationalization and globalization has happened means that employees may be unprepared to deal with knowledge and clients from other cultures. A lack of awareness of cultural differences, whether minute or glaringly obvious, can make or break a working relationship or potential business deal. Uh, continue. And all like that one. And uh, what did you get from that? Uh, it's, uh, I think this topic, uh, we will discuss in the last module, right? Uh, a thing of a global team with people of different races, different cultures, uh, different language. And it's, a good idea because uh, your team can be a, a powerful team because you have different points of view, uh, different parts and different cultures. It's very good for all people um, sharing experience, not only in the world, just for your personal, for, for your personal world. Growing is, is very, very helpful that other people share with us, share with you. Uh, their experience um, in the world um, can be very, very useful because uh, all people can collaborate and teach other people a technique that other country, but uh, exists the, the bad sides because these differences or that difference make can make uh, problems maybe problems problems yeah. <laughs> can generate can generate problems in the in the team because it's possible that people don't understand each other and can generate misunderstanding problem and low low um low performance, low performance of the team. So okay. for one, one side is good, but in the other hand, uh, there are balanced. Perfect, so actually that is very true what you say. I mean, yeah, there are things that we need to be careful on. I mean, respect and also uh, try to understand the other culture so we don't get in trouble, but also we can have different points of view. And that is a very good thing 
for you as a person in a cultural and a social way, and also for the business, because of course you are going to uh, get the understanding of people from other culture and get to to get better results probably for the one. Very good, nice. So the next, uh, let's see. Uh, the next paragraph is going to be for Jarvin Isaac. Not possible. Zuleima Ivan. Roxana Asensio. Okay. Let's look at an example. When an American comes into a meeting, they tend to one spend five or five to 10 minutes breaking the ice. Question light, how was your weekend? Or how about that club's games last night? Helps them feel like they're going, they're doing, sorry, they're doing business with friends, which makes them feel at easy before diving into work. Germans, on the other hand, prefer to jump in, prefer to jump into the discussion right away. So has not to, sorry, so has not to waste valuable, val, valuable, 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 thank you, valuable time and find an excessive amount of a small small talk design design young the the genius the genius is correct this ingenious this ingenious and frustrating not knowing the difference between the two meeting styles can cause conf confusion and even offense. Good. What did you get from this one? Well, um, let me see. Maybe uh, it's common not only for American um Meetings, I think, is in general. Uh, people when try to uh, establish a um, uh, explanation or in different themes with uh, work teams or uh, friends, maybe you have to um, you have to uh, maybe um, talking about uh, initial. Uh, yeah, initial topic, maybe a common topic because uh, you don't usually, uh, well, sometimes you have to be clear and direct with some um, topics or with some uh, explanation, but sometimes people need to uh, spend a little time uh, af before when um, try to share with some information with uh, maybe, a, um, I don't know, como temas vagos? Or general maybe, topic. Yeah, general topic because uh, you have to, maybe it's the way to get a little, um, maybe a little uh, trust or a little um, intimate relation with the others because maybe if you try to be a, to direct, um, I don't know, maybe the the person who received the information could feel like um, 
cold. I don't know, maybe eh, como, how do you say that? Um, not so friendly or something? Um, yeah, uncomfortable, maybe. And that's why the, the person who, who, who needs to, to share some information, try to, we're talking about a general topic to feel uh, or to create a comfortable environment. Okay, so yes, that happens. I mean, uh, yeah, we're discussing about different uh, in cultures in many ways. So of course, it's important to understand uh, the gestures or the uh, the words meaning in different cultures. But in mind in this one also, the way that they do business, the way that they uh, manage a meeting is going to be also different. I mean, that is true. Uh, and I believe that we have, uh, all, all of us have some meaning with American people and that's what they do. Uh, how, how are you? How was your day? Uh, I, they say something, a small talk before. But people from other countries, like the Germans, they don't like that one. If you go and speak, hey, what about the, the game yesterday? They might mm -hmm. feel that they might feel that you don't care, that you are not there so serious, and maybe they don't want to make business with you. But that is different, right? So it's just different. But to be honest, in general, well, for me, American or German people, maybe they are true, true, uh, uh, so. Uh, cool, cool, fríos, and oh, yeah. I, yeah, and direct because uh, when I receive some mails, the American, the American people always are very uh, direct. So some people, uh, they don't um, be like um. Como, como no, son, no son muy amables. To be honest, a lot of people don't say hi. Just send a message. Yeah, that is true. They are so straight to the point, right? I mm -hmm. want this for tomorrow and, and that's it. So, uh, of course, that depends on many uh, industries, many companies, things like that one. Uh, but yeah, in general, of course, Latin American people, we are a little bit different in that aspect because for us kind of educated or anything like that. But yeah, you are right. They are very, very like straight to the point. Yeah, some customer, uh, I remember that say, hi there, I hope you find this email, this email well or something like that. But I receive a lot of email just with the specific issues. And maybe if I receive an uh, email from the uh, uh, gerencia, yeah, the Manager. general, yeah, maybe uh, I understand, but if you receive an uh, email from an external people, you think that the rest of the people try to, or, or, or could be um, more amable. Kind. Kind, yeah, they could be kind, but they don't. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That happens. That happens a lot around the world anyways. So good. Thank you. Uh, and let's check the other paragraph. So this is going to be for, let's see who hasn't read. Um, Marcus. Okay, teacher. Um, since Erin Mayer, I start. Yeah, please. Okay. Erin um, Mayer, an intercultural coach and the author of the Culture Map, breaking through the invisible boundaries of global business, described a client in her book who went to a performance review at an American company where she worked, uh, wherein her boss needed to lecture her about her poor performance. 
but because Americans often begin with a lot of positive feedback, whereas the French give ne negative feedback quite directly with the positive feedback being rather implicit, the French woman left the feedback session feeling proud of her performance. For her, the positive feedback overpower the negative feedback. This, this history points to how vital is to have a solid understanding of the cultural values and customs of the people you're doing business with. Failing to adjust and accommodate for the wide variety of, the, of cultural norms present in business today can alienate colleagues, make business deals go awry, and tarnish your company reputation. Good. What did you get from this one? Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, I understand that um, in this um, this history, who is taken from a a book, and one person has to hear about the positive and the negative feedback and compare how, for example, the French people directly give the negative feedback and, and with the positive feedback, they are not that much implicit. So uh, this woman uh, tried to recover from, from that worse the, the negative feedback. Uh, so she felt overpowered about the negative feedback. And she understood that sometimes, or the, the main point of this is that sometimes we have to understand the cultural value and the variety of the perspective from the other people uh, in, in, the, in this globalized world even more in the business world, that sometimes we are talking with Chinese people or French people or American people, they have a, a distant perspective or point of view. So they say the, the thing that they have to say direct, directly or they say in an implicit way. So it's important to understand the feedback from, from the the people we are doing business with and try to get the, the best, the, uh, the goods instead of the, the bad thing. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, I mean, uh, it's important not only uh, to say things properly, but also the way that you say it, right? So, and yeah, people, as we were discussing before, we were saying sometimes they are direct, sometimes they go straight to the point. Here with for Latin American people, sometimes we feel that rude, so it's not good, right? So, um, at, unless you are with friends or something like that. But other than that, uh, we are not like that. So the way that you say things also is is important, right? There are two words here that I would like to to discuss. Auri, do you know what is auri? It's an an adjective. Anybody? Okay. Not teacher. Okay, Auri is not that common, but yeah, we can learn that word. Auri is like uh, inappropriate. Okay. And the other word is tarnish. Do you know what tarnish means? Okay. Uh, tarnish is kind of not clear, uh, confusing, something like that. Sorry, it was was Auri. Auri was like inappropriate, not appropriate. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, so it says, so what should we do? Certainly we can all study the unique way every culture in the world does business and adapt. However, a little preparation and open mind can take you a long way. Here are a few tips for navigating cross-cultural business. Okay, and the first one it says, as we discussed before, do your research. Okay, so the first 
one is going to be four. Let me tell you who is going to be the first one. Uh, Dora, okay. Do you research before you paint a meeting with a potential client or an interview with a potential employee? Take some time to do a little research about the culture. Explore the political environment or the historical perspective. Does the country have a history as a capitalist or socialist culture? What are the problems, industries, and how are they run? You might, you might have heard the cliche that the Spanish or South American are often late, but is this true? Is a business constant? Indian culture values hierarchies. Why hierarchies? Why the switches tend to embrace a more egalitarian, egalitarian collectivist structure? How might this impact their approach to business? The internet is a valued resource that can provide you with well the information from tourists to cultural experts on how to prepare for any cultural working relationship. Do everyone the courtesies of being prepared. Okay, what did you understand in on this one? Well, when when uh, I have a meeting with a Potential client, potential client or the other cultures is very important uh, research about the culture of the client. It, it was is a uh, in because uh, the in the the Behavior is so different, or, or maybe avoid the uh, miscommunication. Uh, the Google or internet is a is a way for for research uh, other cultures. Okay. Very good, mm -hmm. actually, uh, that is so true. I mean, nowadays, in mm -hmm. this world that is uh, glo global, I mean, globalization, and also with this technology that we have, definitely it's going to be much easier for us to understand the world, uh, cultures, and if we are going to have a meeting with anybody around the world, yeah, it's going to be very easy. I mean, you just need to go there and type something and it's going to give you that one. And you can see here that there are different cliches sometimes. We need to be careful about that one because uh, what internet says maybe is not true for everybody. I mean, Latin American people, people believe that we are always late, but that is not true. For example, myself, I am never late. I, I try not to be late, never. So that happens. We cannot get general misconceptions about many things that we might have. So the next one says, don't jump to conclusions or make judgments. Uh, David Valdames. Okay, teacher. Perhaps your client or colleague uh, is being unusually quiet in a meeting or is continually speaking out of term. Perhaps you receive feedback that felt particularly aggressive or are uneasy with the collaborative approach of your new project management method. Instead of being defensive or passing judgment, give everyone the benefits of the doubt. Recognize that very direct feedback or lack of small talk might be part of the company or individual culture and keep things in perspective. If your feelings have been hurt or you sense that something isn't quite right, start a discussion 
in most of all, keep an open mind. Good, what do you get on this one? Uh, it is important uh, to, uh, to be aware um, of the behavior of the other guys and of our, our own behavior because uh, we need to think is uh, the culture, there are people that are uh, uh, speak uh, directly and as you say previously, we can see this a, a rule guy, but this is the, the, the culture, this is the way that they speak. And uh, uh, we are uh, thinking that is uh, something again us, but it's not uh, the true, it's uh, the way that they think or the way that they, or, or uh, in this case, they, they make a, a distinction about company because companies have their own culture, not only countries, but companies too. Companies have a, their own culture and, and they are a philosophy that uh, all of the people of the company need to follow. In this company, we do the same in this way. And uh, the, the guys need to know and need to follow this, this way of do, things, so, so do something. And it is important. To, to like the previous paragraph, to do the research, to know the company, to know the country, to know the culture, to be prepared for that, that kind of, of things. Okay, very good, perfect. So that is it. I mean, yeah, we have to have an open mind. Do not make any conclusions or judgments. Uh, we need to, besides research, uh, try to not being hurt and adapt to the philosophy of the individual and also from the company, definitely. Next one, it says, read the room. This is for Ana Claudia. Okay. Um, read the room. Uh, just because you're all speaking English doesn't mean you're speaking the same language. You can often learn a lot from people by watching their body language or their responses to giving information. Um, have they understood everything or should you go back and clarify? Remember that part of any communication struggle could be due to the fact that English is not everyone's native language. Doing business is hard enough, but when you have to think outside of your mother tongue, it can be even harder. Avoid idioms and keep the communication simple so everyone can follow. Good, what do you get on this one? Uh, that's true. To, uh, the most important is to avoid the in idioms. Uh, sometimes happens in the meetings we have a, a, in the company, in my account, every Wednesday we have a a meeting that is for everybody in the company. So there are people from Philippine connected, also people from Punjabi people from, from India, Pakistan, Islamabad, Islamabad and, and, and also people from US and we are here in Latin America. And sometimes uh, depending on the uh, one or the speakers, if it's a U.S. speaker, they believe me, they avoid a lot to use idioms. They respect, the, they have like this etiquette. But whenever the turn is for uh, Pakistan, oh my God, they use different words. And, and they using uh, most uh, idioms uh, like the ones we saw in last video. I remember in the last week for uh, uh, UK idioms. They sound like sometimes you uh, stay like, like you're thinking what they are trying to do. But, or as most of the people, most of the, the force, the person of the people they are located in Pakistan is uh, uh, not uh, something uh, that is um, good to hear, but sometimes they start speaking and also writing in Punjabi. And all of us around the other countries, we are like, what they are doing, what they are saying. I don't know, it's something weird. It's like, uh, 
uh, I don't know if to say is um, uh, not respecting others. Uh, sometimes kind of rude because they are talking about their things in their language and the rest of people we are like <clears throat> uh, yes and it is you feel like um not comfortable in those type of meetings okay perfect so that is true and now that you mentioned that one that happens i mean when when people from other countries they use uh, slangs or idioms mm -hmm. you're lost right so you're mm -hmm. lost that's the word Really yeah, it's like you you're trying you're really trying to understand but it's like okay i i didn't get it right so mm -hmm. that is that is a big problem you can you can feel it there so it's important how to communicate with people from other culture definitely mm -hmm. good the next one says now the difference between the cultural and the personal so that is going to be for jessica janari Not possible. William Alexander. Not possible either. Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. Uh, the no difference between the cultural and the and the personal. Yes, please. Okay. Maybe you have meet a Polish person who behaves a certain way and you believe from this that all Polish people have similar traits to this of one person. But this likely isn't true. We are all an amalgamation. How do, how do you pronounce that word? Yeah, yeah amalgamation. Okay, amalgamation of our own personality and the cultural forces that shape us. Learn to tell the difference between someone's unique personality and the values their culture holds. Good, what do you get on this one? Well, uh, maybe we have to, to be careful with when you are speaking with a, with a person with different culture. Uh, they, in, this, in this paragraph, they mention uh, Okay, you have to to know what is the difference in a, a personal behavior and a cultural behavior. You have to to be clear with that. Uh, maybe the, the, you can you 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 can see a, a person that is for you is is a maybe the the, the behavior is is rare, rare or, or something like that and. Maybe for the, the person, this person is normal because in his culture or her culture, uh, that kind of behavior is is normal. But it depends. It depends on the person. Depends on the culture, nationality. It's the different different uh, aspect that you have to to take on care about this. That's it. Perfect, thank you. So definitely, even when we are researching about a culture uh, thing, uh, culture factors, we need to be aware that it's not the same, uh, the way that people or culture are behaving in a personal way than in the business, right? So uh, we need to, to understand that one that is going to be probably kind of different. Good, give everyone time to speak. So that is going to be for Juan Miguel Brand. Not possible. Okay, Heidi, Eugenia. Not possible either. Let's see then, uh, Fernando Gonzalez. Good, everyone. Time to speak. Yes, please. Uh, Chinese business associate may stay quiet for the majority of the meeting waiting patiently for the turn to speak. Whereas in Italian, we'll probably talk at length comparing for the spotlight. Even when you are not working in an intercultural environment, 
It's common for some boys to drown others when facilitating a meeting among college or negotiation or negotiation ideal. Make sure everyone has their turn to speak and make their voice heard. Good. What do you get on this? I think that this is a sign of, of good manner. Like the paraphrase say, even when you you are not working in an intercultural environment, it's essential to you respect the opinion of the others and the turn of the other to talk and wait for your turn and express your spread your doubts or your opinion when when is your turn. Uh, in otherwise uh, maybe other people can consider you uh with bad manners i don't know what is the word for yeah, actually uh, that's education it. yeah bad manners it would be a bad manners. okay maybe the 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 other person in the mirroring can consider you a bad manner person but for me it's it's a it's a it's a topic of good manners okay perfect actually i agree with you i mean this, uh, it doesn't matter if you are from France or Italy or El Salvador, right? So this is something that well, everybody needs to do. So to uh, respect opinions and also to provide the time so everybody will be able to, to speak. Uh, prioritize transparent communication. This is for Roxana Asensio. Okay. If you're not sure how something is done, just ask. Be aware that in certain Asian cultures, employees are encouraged to say that they understand something, even if they don't. Be clear about your expectation and make sure you are available for follow up discussion to clarify information. Make it a pro priority to be concise in concise. your message, concise, thank you, concise in your message and facilitate a safe space to answer question and correct mistake if someone hasn't understood, understood or been understood. Okay, what do you get on this? Well, uh, in general, uh, when someone uh, is explaining a topic, it always uh, the first one, uh, the first step is clear with the information. But at the end of the explanation, it's important when they save a couple of minutes to try to clarify uh, maybe some doubts, do, do, yeah? Okay. Or, yeah, because, uh, you know, uh, maybe when you try, for example, when you try to uh, explain a process with a work team, uh, some of them, maybe have some has some no have some uh, knowledge about the the program or uh, the topic but maybe another uh, they don't have a lot of idea about the the program or the process in general. So it's important when the people try to share information at the end of the explanation, try to solve the question about that explanation. And maybe when, well, uh, yesterday we was talking about uh, that some person try to give feedback yeah it's important maybe when you receive a question in in your explanation because maybe you can improve 
that um, empty for the next presentation. And it's like a little feedback to you. And that's why I, I, I imagine that it's important when uh, try to solve a question at the end of the explanation. And always is maybe it's a benefit for both for the team because they solve the 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 tough thing for for us has a explain sí, como expositor how do you say expositor exposed <laughs> or exposed yeah because uh, you receive a feedback you can improve for the future and you can help the others okay very well perfect thank you so uh, yes i mean i believe that everybody at this point we know that if you don't understand something it's better to ask also this applies for the cultural thing not only for the business or the mm -hmm. way that things must be done mm -hmm. so uh, is it good if i go and wake up and go to to the other part of the room or anything like that one. I mean, the way that you do something is, is better. It's better for you to, to ask before, just uh, in case, I mean, you don't know if that is properly addressed, right? So that is very, very important. Good, okay, there were a few more, but I will send you the link for you to read. Actually, it was just one more. Um, let's read it. Marcus, could you please help me with the last one? Okay, um, working across culture. Okay, be united. Oh, no. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Be united in your mission and vision. When a company employees share a common set of value, this can go leaps and bounds in terms of uni un unity in the organization and helping his employees to transcend their culture border. As Tisdale need, neatly explained in the Harvard Business Review, if you feel a sense of belonging with large organizations, you're more likely to share its value and goal. Likewise, when dealing with clients, a shared objective as to why your mission is what will allow you your working relationship to transcend any culture barriers. Working across culture, can be an invaluable experience leading to professional and personal growth in lifelong collaboration and even friendship. Remember, regardless of whether we're from Finland or France, Spain or Saudi Arabia, we are all people who want to succeed in our professional lives right, and find mm -hmm. meaningful working relationships with others. Keep in mind what you need as a business professional. Learning about and embracing our difference will doubtlessly lead to successful partnerships inside and outside the office. Good, what do you get in this one? Okay, uh, <clears throat> um, it's important in the organization to Set clear the goal, the vision, and the mission. And because uh, in that way, uh, the employees could set, could be engaged or, or feel the, uh, they are part of something big. They are part of, of, of people. They're in a team, they feel, like in a family because they share the same values and the same goals. So um, share the, the same values could increase the, the, the good relationship, the friendship, and any cultural barriers. And because in this market, uh, we have to deal with people from other countries. Uh, so it's important to to gather the people to make them feel that 
they are part of, of something with the same values. So the professional and the, um, I don't know, uh, not professional relationship could just present and uh, maybe we succeed in our, in our objectives. Very good, perfect. So that is true. I mean, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you are from different cultures, different parts of the world, uh, if you have a common objective and you really work for that one, I mean, that is going to be something very good and you will be able to transcend any barrier. It doesn't matter which one do you have. Good, my friends, I will be sending you the links uh, right now. And also I will be checking the attendance since I know that you want to go to sleep. So, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. For you is the 101 today, Dora. Okay. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Genari Cortez Díaz. Near. Good. Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a very good night. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you guys. See you tomorrow. Hello, how are you, Dora? I'm fine, teacher. Very good, nice to meet you. And uh, uh, well, uh, you have experience with the one-on-one. So the first question is, do you have any questions about this module or the previous modules? Um, no, not exactly. It's for me, uh, every class for me is important because I, I learn, I learn every day some, some, something. Yes, I'm, yes. Nice, very nice, very good. And how do you feel that you are moving on? Do you feel that you are learning, that you are growing? Uh, repeat, please, what the yeah. question? Yeah, how do you feel that you are moving on with English class? Do you feel that you are learning, that you are getting something? Yes, I I think I feel uh, are learning. Uh, yes, I like. Okay. I like it. Mm -hmm. Perfect, very well. And uh, okay, uh, remember that you can always ask questions in the class and also you can uh, ask me directly in the WhatsApp chat or in the group I'll chat. So mm -hmm. if you have questions, it will be a pleasure to help you out. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that I we, you want to practice or anything else? 
Uh, I well, I try to to practice in in uh, I I I day it's in the day, but I work in every day and every, all day. But I try to to practice sometime. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, it was a pleasure to be with you. Remember that if you have questions, it will be I will be there for you, and of course, see you tomorrow. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, bye bye. Good night. Good night.